Now it's my great pleasure to introduce Michael McCallum. Michael is an internationally recognised speaker, author and facilitator consultant. He works with organisations and cities predominantly in the Asia Pacific region to develop strategies, innovative thinking and new business models that make them resilient in a fast changing world. He's a founder of the Global Foresight Net Network. In the mid 2000s, Michael made two presentations to the Penrith Council on City Futures and was also engaged to facilitate a conversation about land use options for public land close to the University of Western Sydney's campus. He opened the gathering for the Penrith Progression with some exciting insights on what the future of Penrith could be, and now he is back to set the future context for today's future. Michael. I think, for what that means for Penrith. So that's the future context, and the problem is we can never really know what that future looks like. So if Penrith is going to develop and build and build its identity, it must also have an evolving identity. One of the dangers <coughs> of processes like this is you find three ideas and you rush towards them. <coughs> and if they work, great. But if they don't work, chaos. One of the tricks about today will be to work out how in fact you develop a sense of the future city, which is an evolving identity for an evolving world. You know, just picking up on some of the things that Craig was saying. So don't get too fixed during the day in terms of what's going on in the slide, please. I showed this slide last time, and you're probably actually almost on those crossroads, and I know you all want to go up the top path. And all the ingredients to go up that top path, path are here. The question is, why is it that some people never get up there? What, what happens? And I'm going to suggest, in fact, the reason is we keep just concentrating on the bottom piece of this little graph and the little piece just above it. You and I make sense of our world through stories. And in fact, we, you know, we're quite schizophrenic. We don't even tell the same story twice. And we, we feel perfectly okay with that. <coughs> so as you think about the ideas and opportunities today, Start thinking about the stories that lie behind it. What is that evolving identity for Penrith progression that actually is going to drive those ideas and those opportunities? But then it goes further. And I think this is where Craig was going. What is the idea of a future Penrith, the future Western Sydney that sits about that again? What's that story? And by the way, whilst I can hear fragments of the story, with due respect, Craig, I don't think that's quite my health yet. But more importantly, whatever that story about the future people is, it has to make sense in terms of where the 21st century is going. Don't invest in bookshops in a world of iPads. Don't talk about work in some kind of jobs, in some kind of 1960s construct. Don't talk about seekers as though they're ivory towers. And every time you do, look at the device you've got in front of you and say, that would never happen. So I think what I'm going to be listening for today is not just the ideas and the opportunities, but the stories that in fact are starting to emerge from some of that. And I'll report back by the end of the day on those stories. So, three points for you. Um, the first one is, whatever the answer, you have to be anti-fragile. Fragile means if you drop it and it lands on the floor, it breaks. And by the way, that's most of our current economy. Talk to any retailer at the moment. 
gives you a little bit of upside, but the downside risks are horrible. And it's not enough to be resilient. You have to think about ideas and opportunities that no matter what happens, whether the economy goes up or the state government never spends any more money, whether <coughs> no one sinks into the sea, this place will continue to progress. This has to be a place that thrives and gets better on the discord and the uncertainty. And that's called being anti-fragile. And that's got less risk in it than any of those other positions. My second idea to you is in fact, think about being not the birds and the bees, I can see some smiles in the room, but bees and flowers. And the thing about bees and flowers is they are totally different species, but they need each other. So as you're thinking about the ideas, the opportunities, and you're still sitting around those tables, think about what some of the things that, that are that you can do to add value to those other pieces. And go and tell them, by the way, when you're talking. So you've got to start to think about this whole thing as a series of interconnected ideas all trying to work together. And my point here is this city is not just about place and space. It's about the networks and flows that sit on top of it. And it's about the ideas and the opportunities and the interactions that sit on top of that. And too often we only concentrate on the bottom one. And then wonder why nothing happens. Yeah. What do the networks and flows look like when people get off the train at night? How could we change some of that? What would that do to the dynamics of people? By the way, networks and flows don't always equal come for me and I'm going to capture you first and don't worry about everybody else. So it's also about seeing Penrith nested within the wider Penrith and within the wider Western Sydney. And the final thing is, please, 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 yes, there are some very smart things you can do in terms of today's model, and you'll hear many of those. <coughs> but don't forget tomorrow's economy as well. Don't forget that Airbnb is now the largest hotel chain in the world. For those of you that don't know, Airbnb is ordinary people like you and I renting rooms in their houses. It's the largest hotel chain in the world. There's a new taxi service running around called Uber. I don't know if it's got to Western Sydney yet. But basically it's ordinary people actually picking up other ordinary people in their car and charging a small fee. So your car becomes a profit centre. And in a car-driven place like Penrith, I think that's a really good idea. And that's part of the new economy. So the mix of the future's got to be the old economy ideas which are smart things to do, like the airports and all that kind of good stuff, and new economy things as well. You know, let me just throw one out there for you at the moment. What, what do the drone flows look like around Western Sydney? Drones are going to be a primary means of delivering stuff within five years. So who's going to be the first one to actually figure this stuff out? Yeah. And I bet, I bet, by the way, that a lot of the ideas and technology for manufacturing drones actually in somewhere in Western Sydney right now. Because it's the kinds of minds that you know, have that kind of manufacturing base that do that kind of stuff. So think about the new economy stuff which is going up the new curve and the old economy stuff as well. Don't get too fixated. Don't just bet your bottom dollar on one idea. If you rush to one idea and it works, great. But if you rush to just one idea and it doesn't work, then nothing happens. So look, I wish you well for the day. It wasn't about 